This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. All right, well, welcome to the March uh, Boston WordPress Meetup. Uh, my name is Kurt, and this is John. He's, I'm, he's, I'm John. Hi, John. <laughs> um, Wi-Fi code, if you haven't already logged on, it's under the Cambridge network, BW0318. You can find us on, on bostonwp.org, at bostonwp on Twitter, hashtag bostonwp. Uh, thanks to our first sponsor, Microsoft, uh, for providing an outstanding venue, AV support, Wi-Fi accommodations uh, since 2009, so we're coming up on four years. And also, we'd like to thank HostGator. We um, host our own uh, Boston WordPress site on HostGator. If you're looking for easy hosting with one-click WordPress setup, it's a pretty good solution. Check, try out our Boston WP meetup code for a 25% discount. Uh, like I said, if you're looking for cheap, affordable, easy WordPress hosting, uh, we recommend HostGator. And our pizza sponsor tonight is WP Engine. Um, they <laughs> um, they are also a hosting company. They, they're WordPress exclusive um, WordPress hosting. Uh, use the code WP Meetup Boston 2013 for one free month of hosting on their personal plan. And also, they also gave us shirts to give away too. So that's what the raffles are for. And some awesome automatic WordPress shirts. All right, so. So we have a website. I know we talked about this a little bit last time. We went live during our last meetup. Woo! Um, yep. We've we now uh, well, Kurt has gone in and uh, put all of our meetups that were that happened while the website was down up. So you can find all the videos and uh, any conversation there. Um, we have a job board. It doesn't work. So in the meantime, please like email us. It's one of those things where it was baked into the theme. So why you don't do that? Bake into a plugin so you can switch the theme. That's another meetup. We'll get to that. Uh, our forums are working though, so feel free to jump in there, converse, ask us questions, ask each other questions, that's why it's there. And we have GitHub, it says soon, because soon we'll have more there. It currently exists, uh, we're just trying to get stuff up there. So if you guys have some ideas, WordPress related projects that you want to uh, make known to the community and maybe work on some stuff together, let us know. We already have some ideas for some stuff we're going to throw up there soon, so keep an eye out for it. Um, any developers here? Uh, Come talk to Amir Kurt after the meetup because we have some other stuff going on. If you missed it, we had a, a cool hackathon uh, like two weeks ago that was that was great. So if you missed that and you want to be included on future things like that, come talk to us. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, so, like I said, I'm Kurt. This is John. We also have our other organizers, Tom. Rick goes outside right now. Um, who's talking to Jesse? Eric is somewhere in somewhere. Um, he, he, he's, a, he's a wanderer. Uh, Kay Adam is a little running a little late today, and we have Kelly and Mel in the back. Um, so speaking of Hack Day. Uh, yeah, so uh, about a week, two weeks ago, we did uh, Boston WordPress Hack Day. We had Mark Jake with Andrew Nason give us a rundown of uh, how to actually contribute to core. So a lot of us got together and made a lot of our first core commits. It was a great event. Um, we had over 40 people. Eight, we finished eight tickets that were selected and given to us. There were a number of tickets that we went out after the fact and just accomplished on our own. Um, and... Uh, the recap in the video can be found on the blog. So you can see uh, Mark and Andrew's intro to Core, um, as well as us trying to talk to them over Google Hangout, uh, with a little rundown of what the event was like. So check it out. Um, we hope to do more of that, more of those uh, soon. Uh, there's only one upcoming WordPress event, and that's this coming weekend, uh, Tech Day Camp, uh, run by Tom and Rako. Um So John and Kay Adam will be there doing a Three plus hour beginners workshop. Um, so, if you're a beginner, want to know everything from installing to setting up plugins and themes, um, take a look techdaycamp.com, and uh, they'll begin the, the full spiel. 
Kurt put it all together. We're just reading off the screen. So it's still really, Kurt did a really good job, though. So you should still come. Yes. I won't be there. I'll be playing video games instead. Yeah, back. <laughs> Um, other WordPress meetups, so John's not here tonight, but the Manchester, New Hampshire uh, WordPress Dev and Users Meetup, um, they've been routinely scheduling meetups now, I think it's the Monday before ours, um, but they've been having one every month, so if you're in the area, take a look, or if you're down south, Providence Meetup, you can talk to Jesse, who's out there, if you're interested uh, in the Providence WordPress Meetup. So any questions? First off, my name is Zach Champany. I work on the internet. I've wanted to say that to a bunch of people for a long time, so thank you for being those people. Um, just quick before I get into myself by a show of hands, how many of you guys have WordPress and use it for a personal site? Okay, how many of you have a business site you use it for? All right, how many of you guys use Drupal? Please. Just not by choice. All right. Well, my name's Zach. I'm going to give you a little bit of background about me so you know why, you know. I might be saying things that make sense. I this this company Post Masculine. This is my first professional experience with social media and SEO. It's a self development site for men, but you know women get a lot of it too. Actually, it's pretty cool. I think. Um, since I left the company, I started working at the Startup Institute. Actually, two weeks ago, I'm an associate over there. We take people out of college, out of companies, and we train them up to learn how to work in a startup. Uh, we kind of instill a little bit of entrepreneurial spirit into people, teach them the skills they need, and hopefully they come out and know what to do. Um, but you guys didn't come here to listen to me talk about me, so. Um, cool. So this talk is about using WordPress as your main base. Um, lots of businesses have social media pages, have web pages, have blogs. I'm here to make the argument to say that WordPress should be at the direct center of your strategy. Um, okay, so why WordPress? I mean, I'm probably preaching to the choir here because you all came to a WordPress meetup. I'm gonna go through this real quick. It's intuitive and easy to use. If you can use, say, Facebook, I'm pretty sure within an hour you can figure out how to make a post on WordPress. 17% of the web is powered by WordPress. That's from 2012, so it might even be more, but there's a Forbes article down at the bottom saying that. There's lots of free plugins, tools, and resources. You own the content when you put it on WordPress, unlike maybe Tumblr or Facebook, and it's easily syndicated. Um, I'll get a little more into that later, though. So why have a main base? Why not just have a bunch of stuff online, you know, catching people, bringing them in, however? The first reason, I think, is that it shows that you're a real deal, that you are the real deal. If I go on a Facebook page for a company, if I go on a Twitter, the first thing I do is I go and see what, do they have a website? Are these people legitimate? Or is this just some person on the internet just doing their thing? I think that WordPress is really easy to use, and it's a good way to start if you need a home base. So. The second reason is it facilitates conversation and sharing. I'm going to get into each one of these points a little more with their own slide, but um, WordPress has built-in commenting functionality. There's a lot of easy ways to push your posts out from WordPress, so that's another reason. Um, you own the content and you make the rules. If you go on Facebook and you want to start a contest, Facebook has a whole bunch of rules you have to follow. If you're on Twitter, same thing. If you have your own WordPress site, you can do whatever you want. It's your site, you know? So. Um, your branding, your message, and no one else's. Same thing. You know, Facebook isn't trying to steal people away. I mean, Facebook's trying to steal people away from your content. They're trying to bring them to other things. When it's your site, you own everything that's on it. You can control everything people see. And then it centralizes your voice, which is kind of the theme of this whole talk, which is if someone sees you on Facebook or on Twitter or on Pinterest or something, they don't necessarily know what you're about. And WordPress gives you the opportunity to create a site and have a place where people can come and find out what you're all about. <clears throat> a little bit more. Same thing is with the controlling what's on there. You can control your ads. If you go on Facebook, you go on other places, there's all sorts of stuff to distract people. You go on WordPress, not only can you keep no ads on there, but you can easily add ads that help you generate revenue. Again, you can easily feed other platforms. There's plenty of, like my site, as soon as I post, it goes straight to my Tumblr, it goes straight to my Twitter. I don't even have to do anything. It's easy to do that. It's easy to track and measure the results accurately with multiple plugins and various other um, third-party sites. I'll get into a few of what those are after. And it's easier to find you on Google. As soon as you put a post up, it goes straight into Google. People can find it. If I've made a post right now, 
like I'm in a WordPress group and you Google Zach Champion in a WordPress group, there's a good chance it would show up in the next five minutes. Maybe not five minutes, but soon. The main reason that you want to do this, in my opinion, is you've got to earn Google's respect. Now, I don't know how much all of you know about SEO. I'm not going to get super into SEO, which is search engine optimization for anyone who doesn't know. But WordPress is built, all the functionality is built in for SEO. Like I said, syndicated, as soon as you write a post, it will go right in. So, posts are immediately indexed by Google. If you're doing it the way I'm about to explain it, all the links point to a centralized location, which is important for Google, because Google sees all links going all over the place. They don't know where they should give the most authority. But if you learn to point everything towards WordPress as your home base, it helps boost, Google, boost you up higher in Google. Fresh conversations about your brand, the fact that WordPress allows you to have things like that we're going to speak about, but like a commenting system, or allows you to point your Facebook and your Twitter back. Google recognizes that people are talking about you user-generated content. Things like comments are very valuable. When Google sees that people actually take the time to come and generate content on your site, they see your site as more valuable. Google cares about what people are saying. A lot of these kind of tie in together. The whole thing kind of ties in together. You're trying to show Google that you have this one place in the universe that they can send people when they're looking for what it is you're trying. So if it's your name, your company, if you have a lot of different stuff and it's not interconnected to one place, Google isn't sure, but if you put it right in the middle, Google starts to see that there's a pattern, that it all comes in and it comes to your main base. And Google watches all of the social networks. So if you're getting you know, Reddit shares, if you're getting Doug, if you're getting on Twitter or Facebook, Google sees that. But if it's not all pointing to the same place, Google doesn't know where to send people. This is kind of a meta view of what I'm talking about here. Um, it, it seems simple, but this is important. If you don't do this, the spiders aren't going to know how to index your stuff. It's going to be all over the place, and maybe your Facebook will get above your web page or something random that someone wrote about you. You want to control as much of the front page as possible, and the more you connect things coming back into one place, the more that one place will go up. You can do a lot of... One way to really use your WordPress site as your main base is using social widgets. You can use, so I'm going to show you an image of this stuff right after, so you know, just use your imagination for now. But there are a lot of things like Shareaholic Socialize, which was actually made by John, one of the head people here. He killed me if you heard me saying this, but he made it. And um, there's a floating share bar. You can put a call to action below a post, such as, hey, you know, you read this post, you should share this to Twitter, to wherever you want to go. You can display your actual Facebook, your Facebook likes. You can display your Twitter. You can display your Instagram there. You can show people how to connect and share through doing these things. You can show them. You should, you should put this stuff front and center. They should know how to connect with you in other ways because even though you have your main base, maybe someone likes Facebook more. Maybe someone wants to follow your Facebook page and will never come to your blog. They should know how. Um, and don't go overboard. Content should come first. You know, you might see an article and it's got a million different ways to share it. It's like, why would I share this? It's crap. People focus too much on this stuff sometimes. Make sure you, you know, you keep it normal. Okay. Kind of flying through this. Is there, does anybody have any questions so far? What's up? With respect to social media, <coughs> you can either go out from your site to your social centers, your Twitter, your Facebook, etc., which some people say are leaks and you really don't want to go out, or you can send that information in from your well, media. You were showing there a, a hub where your blog, you know, your blog is at the center, and, and all those are incoming links, are they not, mm. from your social sites? Yes, they are incoming links. But you don't want social, your, your links outgoing to the social sites, but you don't want leaks. Well, I don't necessarily want them going to, like, say, Facebook by itself, but why wouldn't I want someone to know that I'm on Facebook? My presence on Facebook might not be the same as my presence in my blog. Maybe I make offers to people on Facebook. I mean, not me, but maybe my company makes offers on Facebook. Maybe my company makes offers on Twitter. And I'm personally of the school of thinking that I want to connect with people however they want to connect with me. So as long as it's a medium that I enjoy, you know what, if you're going to talk to me on Twitter and you're never going to come to my blog, but you found it through my blog, cool. I'm glad you found me. 
you know, and I mean, for SEO, I don't think there's a penalty for sharing, for linking out, but I know what you're talking about. Sometimes if you link out to, if you link out to a bunch of sites that don't have any authority, it's kind of like you are the company you keep. So Google's going to be like, well, they link to crappy people, so they must be crappy, you know? But if you're linking to your Facebook and your Twitter and you have a decent presence, you're not going to get faulted for that. In fact, I think, if anything, it's going to give you a boost because it shows that you're actually well, you're actually in the mix. You're doing something, and you're there right now. Okay. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. I don't understand what you mean by uh, Google's going to think you're cool or not cool. That's okay. Well, real quick, I'm going to just break down what search engine optimization is, like, real quick, because it's a very vast topic. But basically, Google is getting very good at deciding what information is pertinent when someone searches. Like, that's why I use Google, you know? Like, if I want to say, how big is your average elephant? Google's gotten really good at telling me how big it is, or else people wouldn't use it. So it's constantly upgrading the way it decides what's pertinent, what's relevant. And so, for instance, let's say you just had your name. You want to rank as high as you can for your name. You know, you want, when someone Googles it, no one's going to page three for Joe Jackson, you know, they're going to page one and probably to spot one, two, or three. And so, what Google does is it, it looks at all sorts of things. It looks at how many times people share your articles, how many times people read your articles, how long people actually stay on your articles, stuff like that. And so that's kind of how it's deciding, like, what's cool or good and what's not. Um, the, the better you do with this stuff, the higher up you get and the more credit you get. And the less you pay attention to this stuff, the harder it's going to be to take someone who might... If, if, there's, if there's you and there's someone above you, and they're doing this and you're not, they're going to stay above you. And that's a huge edge when, re when you really break down who clicks on what. Most people never even get to number four. Once you get past three, it, you see enormously diminishing returns. And so that, th does that answer the question, or can I... Elaborate? Sorry, that's right. Thank you. Could you talk more about the share, uh, how they, uh, share bar, yes. what are those? Yes, these specific um, plugins, and there are many, there's actually down here 17 best WordPress plugins, there, there's a bunch, but these ones specifically, they there's a bar, you, you've all seen this on content, there's a bar to the left of a post, and it will say Facebook, um, Twitter, Dig, Reddit, and basically you can as, as you're, I'm going to actually show you one just like I'm going to show you the floating share bar in the next image. Actually, no, let me bring that up. This is the site that I just worked for. Post Masculine, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Um, this article was, this article went super viral. We had two million hits. It was 10 things Americans don't know about America. It was actually a little offensive. I was a little offended, but I didn't write it. So, anyway. Um, and so this is the floating bar. As you scroll down the stairs right to the left of the content, you can see you got 190,000 Facebook likes, 474,700 tweets. Yeah, we didn't know this was going to happen. It, it really, it took our site down for a few days, and it really changed the way the business ran for the rest of the time because of the traffic we got from it. So it was like a piece of link page. Yeah, he, he um, well, what had happened, actually, just a quick sidebar, he, he wrote an article on visiting India, and, um, about six months later, Hacker News, if all of you are familiar with Hacker News, picked that up, and he got really, really high up there, and so he was like, geez, you know, what, what do I write now? You know, I've got, you know, 50,000 people on my web page, and he had had this idea for a while, and he decided to go with this one because he had all these eyes, and then every, just, it shut everything down. It went from, 50, we thought 50,000 was a lot, and then we had 2 million people, and he bought new hosting like six times that day. It was insane. Um, but yeah, so this is the floating sidebar. As you scroll down, you can't scroll down here because it's a screenshot, but it just stays with it so at all times people realize that, you know, if I really do like this, maybe I do want to share it with my friends. Maybe I do want to put it on Facebook or something. Over there, you can see a couple different things he's doing. Up top, he's letting people subscribe on email. He makes special offers to people. So that's one way to use your site as a base for your social connectivity. You can start email lists with your site. Um, right below it, he features his five main page. Well, there's RSS on the right, YouTube, Google+, Twitter, Facebook, those are what he decided to choose. You click on any of those, it goes right directly to one of those pages for his company. Um, below, there's a Facebook one and then another Twitter one. It shows how many Facebook likes he has and Twitter likes he has. As you get more people, it's really valuable to maybe show how much sharing you're doing or what people are doing or how much people like your stuff because it's called social proof. 
Um, it's like if you if you're walking down the street and there's three restaurants, but one restaurant has a bunch of people in it and two don't. Bless you. I mean, unless you're trying to be quick. Bless you. Unless you're trying to be quick, you're probably going to be wondering what's up with the restaurant that has all the people, right? It's kind of the same thing. Look, I'm reading this article. I'm at the top. Oh, should I read this? Wait, 190,000 people like this on Facebook? Like, maybe it's worth reading. What's up? Um, is there a way to, if you're a reader and you find this all distracting, can you just be distracted with the reader option? Um, well, you, I think you used to be able to do that with Google Reader, but sadly it's going away soon. Uh, I think they're, away? Google Reader, I'm sorry if I'm the bearer of bad news, but Google Reader is going to die. Sorry. There are other options out there, and I'm sure now that this is happening that some small company, some startup will probably start something awesome. I think Dig already announced they're going to make a reader, so on. Yes, there are ways to take it all away. And I do agree that sometimes it's distracting, but from a marketing perspective, uh, you got to do it. And is this what the mobile site looks like, this is, this is not what the main site looks like. He actually made it so that only when you're reading content you see this. When the main site's a little different, I didn't take a screenshot of that. I'm sorry. Was there another hand? Well, I was just going to say that Feedly uh, uh, melted down to because 500,000 people uh, went from abandoned Google Reader. Yeah. Once that it yeah. Crashed. Yeah. Google Reader going away is sad. Really that, sad. That sucks that Google Reader's going away. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys all want to just talk about that for a minute? Because <laughs> I understand. It hurts me too. No? Yeah. What's up? Um, did, you, did you mean the reader option like in Safari? I or think so. Mean, yeah. Yeah, something like into the paper. Yeah, I have I have something that like takes everything off of it. I think I use Pocket and that takes everything Same off thing. of it. And there's a, there's a couple like if you go into the Chrome store or something, you'll find some things that. Uh, but my question is, if I were to add a sidebar like that to some of my sites, it would say zero likes, zero tweets, <laughs> yes. and that I would imagine would be more damaging than not having that bar at all. That is true. Well, I mean. There, there's arguments for both. Um, most of these have the ability to take off the actual count. So you can still have the share button, but not let people know you suck. You know <laughs> Just mess with you. Man. But, um, and then, as you can see, too, there's like 2,000 comments. Commenting is another awesome thing that's built right into WordPress that you don't have to worry about. It just does it for you, which is awesome because it's not always the case. Like Tumblr, I don't even know what's going on with Tumblr. But I'm under that, so whatever. Oh, one more question. Yes, all so the questions. On the right there, yes. they have the five favorite social media sites, Facebook, Tumblr, Google+. You know, there are dozens or hundreds of social media sites out there. Is there a point where, like, you shouldn't list all of them? Should you only list the top five? Um, well, I'm going to get a little into tracking what's working and what's not later. And I think that mainly it really comes down to seeing what it is your readership is doing and then not distracting them with a bunch of buttons. So you're right, like, some people need Pinterest up there because their content's more geared towards pictures and stuff. Some people need Reddit because most of their readers were from Reddit in the first place. His, he finds that he gets the most value of using those three. I would personally recommend to everyone, if you're gonna do one, always do Google. Always do your Google Plus, even, though, even if no one's on it. Always have a YouTube channel and point out and point in because Google gives respect to Google. I could write, I could do, Google, Google respects Google more than anything. I could do a YouTube video tomorrow about some keyword that doesn't ex matter that much, and I would get the number one spot if I did it on YouTube, because it's just, that's just how they do it. And if you know that, it's powerful. You know, I don't blame them. It's their company, it's their search engine. Um, any more questions before I move a little along? So there's no LinkedIn button. He doesn't have a LinkedIn button. He doesn't find that that's valuable for him. He, he's not trying to be hired. Most he's, of the content I write gets shared on LinkedIn. Yeah, he doesn't write much. He does write some business. You know what? I should talk to him about that. But so far, he hasn't really seen the value in it himself. And like I said, I don't work there anymore. But I, he does, you know, I do kind of still consult. So I'll talk to him about that. Yeah. So far, he doesn't. He doesn't. But he has some really, actually... He's got some really interesting articles on here about being a digital nomad. He's been to 54 different countries. He's been writing his blog for now, I think, six years. Um, lots of stuff about entrepreneurship. There's an article called Kill Your Day Job and Travel the World. It's all about how you can get a job doing WordPress or doing design or like they were saying for automatic. If you learn what you're doing, you can find a company that will pay you to go anywhere. I know we're kind of diverging here, but he has a lot of really interesting articles about that stuff. So that's something you're into. Check out the site. Um, cool. 
Another thing that WordPress does really, really great right out of the box is it syndicates you on RSS. Does anybody not know what RSS is? It's okay. Cool. RSS is basically, I mean, I'm going to sound like a noob explaining this, but it's this thing where basically, like Google Reader, it gives you this feed, and you can say, I want to sign up for this blog, and I want it to show up in my reader, or I want it to email me every time this person updates their blog, because I really like this blog. So that's what RSS is. I think that if you have a blog, it's valuable to have an RSS because who knows who wants to read your stuff. Um, people can subscribe. You can have it, you know, they can decide if they want it to alert their phone when you make a con when you do something. Devices, emails, tablets, you know, give people these options. You never know how they're going to want to connect with you. And the fact that when you write something, you might make a ding go off in someone's pocket and they might read it. That's a really powerful tool that most people didn't have up until recently. Marketers go crazy on that stuff. It's hard to get into someone's phone, but if you can, you've got them, obviously. So use that RSS. See if you can't, you know, drum up some interest that way. Give people every opportunity to follow you. Um, also, this is just a personal pet peeve of mine, but make it clear how to contact you on your web page. Part of my job was researching web pages and trying to contact the owners. I can't tell you how many people just suck at telling you how to get in touch with them. Like, put your email down in the footer, make a contact page, get a form, use, you know, Gravity Forms, is contact forms, contact seven still out there, John? Yeah, use contact form seven. Make a contact me page, okay? Do that. Because I get emails sometimes that I never would have thought I'd get just because there's a contact page and it's cool. Zach, contact yes. me, free, very simple uh, little snippet of JavaScript is really nice. Awesome. Thank you. Contact, contact me. Contactme.com. Contactme.com. Even Jetpack will do it. Yeah, j actually, that's new, right? They, j they just start doing that? The last few months. Last few months? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, but you can actually, you know, what I do on, on my blog, I contact me and I take the JavaScript and I have a page. Because I don't want it to be a mystery. I want it to be really simple to find me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Everything's right there. My, my, ad, my physical address, my phone number, all my social media icons. Yeah, that's this guy right here. Why are you up here right now? Come on. Um, cool, that's good advice. Um, okay, next slide. Open up the dialogue with commenting. This is something that different companies and different people kind of have different schools of thought on. My school of thought is, I want to hear what you have to say. You know, like, I don't want to hide. I want honest feedback from people. And so WordPress makes it really easy. Right off the bat, you put up a post, people can just comment on it, right? That's just, that's just natural, right? Yeah, you have to shut that off, you know? Um, so it's there. But there's other, more powerful plugins with more options too. Not that the WordPress commenting system has any problems with it, but I've used Discuss, I've used LiveFire. It allows people to see your past comments. It allows people to like your comments. People love liking stuff these days, you know? So consider it, check them out. There's some cool stuff, you know, that you can see. I think there's, there's one called Comment Love, I think that's really cool, that shows the stuff you've commented on, like what you last commented on, even if it's not on the same blog. So if people like your comments, they can kind of see what kind of stuff you read and comment on. Um, you should engage in the conversation. There's nothing I hate more than when I read a piece, and I'm like, hell yeah, this is awesome, and then the person doesn't respond to my comment, and like two months later, it's like, dude, I know you get an email saying I commented, like, why aren't you responding? If you're not going to respond, shut off comments, because I think it makes you look really rude if you don't respond, in my opinion. Um, and it also, if you engage in that conversation and you really get to know what people are say saying about you and you ask questions, you don't just say like, oh, thanks, you know, ask them what they like. They took the time to comment. Do you guys comment on stuff you don't care about? Like, has anybody here commented on something last week they don't care about, right? So if someone comments, comment back, see what they have to say. Um, you can curb the spam with something like Ask Mint. If you don't, it's going to be miserable. So if you, you get a WordPress blog, put Ask Mint on there because people are going to be like, Oh, I see you are having trouble with your WordPress site, and they will make you all sorts of offers. They don't want to help you. Um, and then comments also, I think, I think you might have to turn this on, but they allow, sorry, you can't see that down there, but they allow for trackbacks, which is, let's say you wrote a post that I liked, and I linked to your post, and I post, on the bottom of your post, it would say a comment, say, oh, this person linked to this post, and here's what they said. And so your readers can be like, oh, what are people saying about this post? And they can go over and see who's been blogging about your posts. Any questions? What's up? Is the trackbacks is the plugin too? Or? Is it what? Plugin. 
Um, uh, it's a plug. -in. I think trap back happens naturally. It's okay. naturally. It's automatic. Yes. Do you have to shut it off or turn it on? You have to shut it off. You can turn it on. Yeah. You have to shut it off. Yes. Um, yeah. And I think it's handy. It's something that you can shut off because, I mean, you can do whatever you want. To be honest. I like having it because I like when people write about me. You know. So. You have to approve the trap back. You don't like it. Yeah, it's just like a comment. All comments you have to approve. So it's not like someone can just like, be like, you suck, and like it's there forever. No, you have to say that's okay, and you can delete it if you don't like it. You know, no, don't be afraid. Um, another way to get people being social on your website, especially if you're a company, is a forum. I think forums are great resources. I've gotten a ton of value out of forums. Post Masculine had a forum, and I am friends with people I met there. I met them on Facebook, I've hung out with them, it's really cool. Um, it lets people kind of go further down the rabbit hole, you know, they care about you, they want to talk about you, they want to find the other people who want to talk about you, they want to talk about things like what you talk about. You know, if you have a business or you have a lot of people coming in, if you see a lot of comments, just give a forum a shot, you know. Um, it's great for SEO for a couple of reasons. It's got, it's got what Google loves, user-generated comment content. It's got stuff happening in time, so if people are commenting on your forum every couple days, it shows Google like, hey, people like give a crap about this website, they're commenting on this forum. And um, it's always fresh content, it's always fresh content. Something new, it's keyword dense, I don't know how much you guys know about keywords, Google loves that stuff. Um, helps you form a community, like I just said, like, I'm best friends with some of the people I met in the Postmaster forum and other forums, you know? Um, so it, it helps helps kind of like people talk about your brand. We, I mean. On the post masculine forum, people would come on and be like, wow, we really didn't like this, blah, blah, blah. Why do you do it like this? And it, it makes you accountable. I mean, you have to be willing to hear it, but it gives you the chance to hear what people have to say. I'll be with you in one second. And it, it lets you address it, which I think is really valuable. Some people don't want to address it, and I think those are the companies that probably won't be around very long because as the social media gets more social, the people who don't want to be accountable for the things they do, you know, people are just going to stop calling to me. I'm sorry, that's your question. Can you find the price for Comforts? I have a link. It, you can't see it. It's down here. It, it got cut off. But um, BB Press. I, I haven't I haven't um, made my own, but every form I've ever used as an administrator was BB Press. Um, I, I've never made one. I think it, I think there's a free version, and there's one that there's a small fee. I'm not sure, though. You guys, what did you guys use for your form? Yeah, you use BB Press. BB Press was also, free? Like, you mentioned Buddy Press, which is forms more of a community and you can like and you know, yeah. profile and stuff, and it comes from BB Press. Cool. They, they have a blog called festobsessed.com. If, like, if you like music festivals, you should check it out. Um, yeah, there is. I actually I, I made a link to Buddy Press. I don't know if any of you know what it is, but it's a whole talk upon itself, so I wasn't going to stand up here and like. But there's a link at the end of this for BodyPress. It's really cool. You can make social networks out of your WordPress site. If you have an idea for a social network, check out BodyPress. Um, if you're a company that has reviews, um, most companies have reviews now um, for their company itself, even for people who work there with Glassdoor. But let's say you're a restaurant. You have an awesome Yelp rating. Yelp is a plugin where people can see your ratings right on the site. If you have a Yelp page, Again, you should point it back to your site so Google knows that that's the center of the universe. Wow, this, this people has a Yelp rating, and they have a Facebook page, and they have a Twitter, and it's all coming back here. Let's put them up a little higher. Um, so Yelp's cool. Glassdoor's really handy, actually, if you're going to work somewhere. Um, if, you, if you have a company, you can hide it, because you might not want people talking about your company. But if, if you go to Glassdoor, and you can find out how a company treated people. You can find out what the interview questions were. You can find out the average salary for people. But let's say your company has great reviews. You could put a Glassdoor plugin right on your page and show that people really like you. Um, Google reviews, that pops up right in Google. But another thing, like if, if you're doing good and you're killing it, you should show off that people like you right in your site. You should find a way to do that because it's social proof. Like I said, you're going to go to the place that everybody wants to go to. Um, yeah, you can display these or have Basically what I just said right in the slide. Um, tracking the value. Now, this again is a whole other talk, tracking social media and tracking traffic. But I wanted to give you a few resources to just kind of explain what they are. Down the bottom, there's resources. You'll follow them by the stars. The first one is Hootsuite. How many people here have used Hootsuite? Let me just get an idea. OK, a few. Cool. Hootsuite lets you track um, how many people come to your stuff, how many people share your stuff. And it also 
allows you to log into multiple sites. Like, it's a pain in the ass to go log into LinkedIn, log into Twitter, and log into Facebook. Well, in Hootsuite, you can log into all of them. You can make an update and have it go to all of them. You can make an update and say, oh, I only want this to go to my Twitter and my Facebook. It's really simple, really intuitive. There is a quick, I think, seven minute how-to video right there at the first star. Google Analytics is a, it's a beast. If you've ever used Google Analytics, you could get lost in that thing for days, but it's pretty intuitive, actually. If you just do a couple, if you just get in there and you watch like a quick five minute video, you can learn a lot about who's coming to your site, how long they're staying there, at what point they leave. You know, it's very valuable to see like, oh, they go to three pages and they get to this page and they leave, so I should get rid of that page because people are leaving because of that page. Lots of cool stuff. You can, you, you can add all sorts of custom tracking there's a video I picked specifically on how to track social media interaction, but you could go on Google, and Google's very simple. Google is the king at making things simple and easy to understand and explaining it in a way that, you know, anybody after 10 minutes could probably figure it out. So I recommend checking out Google Analytics. The last thing is Bitly. There's a dot there, and I was a little tired when I made this. And um, basically what Bitly does is it allows you to make a link, like a special link, and then you can send that link out. And then it tracks everybody who clicks on it. You can see how many people click that link and you can really start to track like, well, if I share something at like three o'clock, this is how many people saw it. But then I shared the same thing at two o'clock and it was different or, you know, Wednesdays are better than Mondays. It takes a while. It takes some, you know, login stuff and working with Hootsuite and analytics, but it's a really handy thing to have. You know, if you just, everybody go home just as an exercise. If you have some sort of social media thing, find any article, it doesn't have to be yours. Um, something cool that you're interested in, put it in a bit.ly, get a little link, share it, and then it's kind of cool. It's a little validating. A lot of people click my link. It's cool. Um, and there is a video as well. So do you tie your bit.ly directly to your Hootsuite and it follows it? or You can do that. Right, now, you can do that. Uh, Hootsuite uses its own. Oh, does it? Okay. Uh, there's other places where you can plug in the uh, bit.ly API. Yeah. And there's a service called Plugin that allows you to do Hootsuite. Out of other blogs, and you can put the there. Cool, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, I mean, link shortener's Billy used to be a lot cooler, in my opinion, like three years ago when there weren't that many ways to track easily. Now, I mean, Twitter shortens links by itself, right? Like a lot of these things just do it anyway, but I still think Billy's awesome. And did there's. They, did they purchase the link? Did they? Uh, Is that how it works? Is that why it does that? No. Someone did. Okay. Everybody buys everybody. Right? Watch the link. Right? I think they did. did. But you, another cool thing with Bitly is you can attach, you can put a plus sign in any Bitly link to find, see all the data for that link, which is really cool. So find something really popular, and then just put the plus sign at the end, and you see everyone who shared it. So you don't have to be the one who created it to do it. So you can yeah. see how other companies are doing it by like, picking up their Bitly and having plus. And you're like, oh my god, they got two clicks off of that. They're not that hot. <laughs> yeah, like I'm saying, like these three things, especially the first two, they're just beasts. They are enormously valuable, free tools. You can learn so much about who's coming to your site, why they come. If you're a marketer or if you're getting into marketing, if you're like a student, like I, I work at the Startup Institute, analytics is one of the first things we go over with the marketing people because the insight you can get from that stuff is invaluable when you're trying to connect with people. Um, Zach, what about Open Site Explorer? Have you tried that? I have not. Well, actually, SEO mods. Yes, I, there's so many awesome tools out there, but that is a great one. Um, but that, do you want to talk that's, about that's it? pretty easy to use. Yeah. Because you can just see right below all the links that are pointing back to whatever URL you choose. Yeah. So you can pick an internal page. You can pick your index page. It's very valuable. Um, what he's talking about is a little more SEO geared, and basically. Links are really, links are the currency. So that's why I want your Facebook to point back to, you know, your site. That's why I want your Twitter, because the more links you get, the more good links you get, like Open Site Explorer shows you which ones you have, the better Google respects you. So Open Site Explorer, in a nutshell, allows you to say, okay, here, here's a web page. Let's say zachchampion.com is my web page slash WordPress, if I wrote a WordPress thing. It would allow me to see who is linked to that. Um, and how many links have been built, and how over time, and you can you can even look up. Can you look up keywords with Open Site Explorer? I know you can with, with other tools. There there are so many great SEO tools out there.
there's so many great ones. It's almost hard to pick one. So, um, but Open Site Explorer is great. Well, I just mentioned it because it's free. Yeah, yeah, and not all of them are free. There's other tools that are pretty, pretty pricey that you can do them. Yeah, thank you. What's your name? John. John, nice to meet you, John. Um, okay. Next slide. What do I put in my site? So you're sitting here and you're going like, oh, this kid's telling me to make a website. Like, what am I supposed to put on it, you know? This is pretty, this is a pretty simple rundown of it, but it's not that hard to make a blog. And Google respects blogs because it's fresh, user-generated content, like I've been saying. So if you're stuck and you're sitting here going, what do I write about? I work for a company, I have my own personal site. This is a good place to start. What is going on in your life? What is going on in your company? What is going on in your industry? If you can't think of like 20 things to talk about with your life, your company, your industry, like what are you doing? I don't understand. You know, like sit down, get a piece of paper and a pen, and I think you'll surprise yourself. Um, teach people something. You, you have to know, like, look, John just taught you guys a whole bunch of stuff in the last five minutes. I guarantee you every one of you has stuff that you didn't even realize you can teach people. Get a piece of paper and a pen. Start writing it down. Start expanding your ideas. Put it in a blog. It'll be awesome. Um, if you're a company or you're a person, you're a freelancer, what are the services you offer and why should people trust you? Talk about what it is you do. Talk about why it is you're passionate about what you're doing. Talk about how it is you learned how to do that. What, what was your journey to getting to that point? Um, just thoughtful, insightful conversation stars. Like, what, what's going on, just like I said, in your industry? Did something just happen that's really cool that, that you got on your mind? You're like, wow, I can't believe that company did it. Just write, hey, I can't believe this company did this. It's really cool, you know? Like, what do you think? Maybe no one's reading right away, but if they're reading, they might have something to say about it. And just videos, images, podcasts, whiteboards, just whatever you can think of, you know? Just get it up. There. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. And if, if you're doing it regularly, I wouldn't say just like, a whole bunch of content on your site. I would, I would do it slowly so Google can see that you are regularly adding content. You're there. You're not just some person who put a bunch of stuff up there and then it's there. Um, and then making it count. It's not enough to just put this stuff on your site. I'll bet you at least one person in this room has had an experience where they're like, they got all fired up. Like, I got a company. I got this page. I'm going to make it. I'm going to put it up there. And like two weeks later, you're like, where is everybody? You know, like, why, why isn't anybody coming? Maybe it's because you're not actually taking it seriously. You can't just put it out there. You have to engage people. You have to, if you go to Twitter, you got to go find people who are talking about what it is you want to talk about and talk about it with them. It's not good enough to just make a Twitter page. No one's going to find you. You know, you got to, you got to offer value. You have to engage people. That, that stuff's important. Like, I, I don't think any of you are just, like, randomly like, oh, I like this pizza company. Oh, I'm definitely going to follow them. Oh, they don't do anything on their Facebook page? Gotta follow them anyway. You probably just ignore them, right? It's really easy to lose some attention these days. It's the internet. Um, I'm glad I had you guys' attention so far. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, don't just make a Facebook page or an email list. Don't just be like, oh, sign up for my email list. Like, why should they sign up for your email list? What are you gonna do for them? Nobody cares about you until you give them a reason to on the internet and make them care. People's time is valuable. Why do you deserve it? That might be my last slide. We'll see. Additional resources. John, the organizer, and I actually a few months ago wrote a post on how to make your site a little more social. It kind of gets a little more in depth into why and how and what. It's kind of the, the <coughs> place this talk came from. Um, this is a talk, this is a post that actually it goes right along with the theme of this talk. I'll admit that some of the ideas I'm presenting to you I got right out of this talk. It's where that picture came from with all the stuff linking in. Um, this is Facebook. Um, open graph, it, that's like Google Analytics, like that's its own thing. I didn't want to get too into it, but if you want to share on Facebook and you take that seriously, it's good to kind of get an overview. It doesn't take very long to understand it and get a mastery of it, so, you know, 10, 20 minutes, you got it. And then down here is that buddy press thing that Steve over here mentioned, which is basically, it's got all sorts of stuff. You can make a form, you can allow your people to have profiles, you can make an actual social network, um, lots of stuff like that. And Anybody? Yes. If you're active on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, all these different sites where you're generating dynamic content on a regular basis, is it enough to have a WordPress site that is just sort of a hub that links all these places, or does that WordPress site need to have its own blog and its own dynamic content? I think it's very valuable to have your own content because Google won't really respect you if you just have just the site there. What is What value does that site offer Google? Google basically its job is when you type something in to make sure you're gonna get exactly what you want. So unless you have like a really popular site, you know, like 
well, what, uh, why would Google think you're valuable? You need to prove to Google that you're actually doing something unless you have a whole bunch of content that people already go to. If you have a, a bunch of content people already go to, fine, you can leave it like that. Um, but if you're trying to climb the ranks, you got to put in the work. You got you got to show Google you're doing it. You got to show you got to give people a reason to come and get, to share. I think the number one thing that you can do that's going to help your site, you know, forget all this stuff, write something awesome, put something awesome on the internet. If you want to establish your presence, you have to make it so that people want to share what you have to say. If you just put it up there because you you want to put something up there to hopefully find Google, you're going to fail. You're probably going to fail unless that keyword has no competition, which sometimes it will. Like, Zach Champney, I got that, like, pff, it was no big deal. Nobody has my name, you know what I mean? I got, I got like three pages of that name. But like, if you really have a keyword you're fighting for, if, if you have a company and you have competitors, you have to be vigilant about making sure you're providing quality stuff that people want to read and people want to share, or else it's going to be no good. You keep mentioning keyword. Do we have to drink up something that's sexy or? Uh... Well, yes, no. Um, <laughs> base, well, what do you read on the internet? Well, what oh, do you take okay. to get your attention? Well, newspaper. But, well, it has to be interesting, doesn't it, or else you'll just skip it. True. And it has to be something that you care about, right? Right. And it has to be topical. I mean, maybe unless you're reading something historically on purpose, you're not just going to read, like, news from two years ago, right? Now, take those things into consideration. There's no super winning formula because there's 7.5 billion people in the world. You know, you have a large audience of different niches to attract. But it has to be something that's, that, you know, is important. I've written plenty of blog posts nobody's read. I took most of them off before I came here. But <laughs> I've read, I, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it, people aren't just going to magically find you. Think about what brings you to something. I'll do it in one second. And then try and incorporate that. It's going to take practice. You know, none of you guys, well, maybe some of you are going to go home and write something that all of a sudden gets two million hits. That guy, Mark, wrote for six years. This summer was the first time two million people ever came to one of his posts. It takes a lot of hard work. But if that's what you want to do, if you want people to come to your site, that's kind of what you're going to do. You've got to take it seriously. It's got to be its going to be part of your brand's mission. It can't just be like this little thing you do on the side, or else that's all it's ever going to be. You understand? What's up? Um, does Google have a filter for actual like, facts and information, or does it just count how many people come to the site? So if, if a bunch of people just spread like misinformation and have like a really popular site that might not even have the right answer, you know, like does Google actually care about they're trying to, but it's kind of the wild, wild west, and Google's getting better and better at filtering quality content. Um, they, they've probably done four or five updates since I started working for Postmaster and on how they do things. And before, it used to be really easy. When I first started working, let's say I wanted, like, just WordPress and social. Let's pretend no one was competing for that. All I had to do was go by, like, WordPress and social, and write like two articles and be like, oh, WordPress and social is great. I love WordPress and social. I'm not really saying anything of value. But because, you know, there's nothing else and Google didn't really know how to filter for that, that's what we get up to the top. They're getting a lot better at looking at the words you write and what other people write. It's not even necessarily any more links, like you were saying, but, or like I was saying, it's even more about what people are writing about you. So it's like if someone's like, this was a great factual article about WordPress and social, and a bunch of people are saying like, factual, relevant, topical, Google's gonna see that stuff now. It used to just be like, link, link, link. So people used to just like, buy links, like buy a bunch of links to say, oh, like, let me get up to the top. Now, it, it's, it's a formula of social media. Social media is becoming more and more important. Google's looking more and more at how much sharing there is, and stuff like that. But to answer your question, it it hasn't gotten there yet, but I'll bet you in the next five or six years it's gonna be it's gonna become even more accurate. I mean nothing's ever gonna be foolproof, I think, but it's getting there, you know. I think eventually Google would like to get to a point where you don't actually see a website, they're just serving you up the answer. Once they can figure out how to contextually grab that and abstract it from websites when it's just a bunch of markup and jumbled text, we'll get there. Until then we're trying to figure out the best way to get things semantic I like how we talk about Google like it's our phone. Um, <laughs> What's up? One thing that I, I wanted to add is that uh, one thing that I really like about what Google does in order to figure out whether a site is legitimate or not is one, they see the types of sites that link to you because you know inbound links mean a lot, right? But if you're a food blogger and a lot of other food bloggers link to you, it means a lot more than if like random spam sites link. Right. So it's relevant content. And the other thing that they do, which I think is really neat, 
is if it's duplicate content, you get hurt for it, right? So like if you're a site, a spam site that just copies like AP Newswire, or it, like just copy copies content and you post that and Google sees that it's already been posted like two weeks ago somewhere else, you get hurt by that, right? And so that's also the same reason why a lot of newspaper sites are not showing as much wire content these days because wire content is being replicated throughout the internet. So. But aren't there canonical links to prevent that? Canonical links basically means like if you're on one site and there's like multiple like versions of your link, canonical means you only have one version of it linking into one site. That doesn't really have to do with like duplicate content on two, uh, two separate websites. Okay. Like if, you know, like the Chicago Tribune and the Chicago Sun-Times runs the same story, but it's like two totally separate domains, that's not the same as the canonical link, which is you know, Chicago Tribune has one story and they've made eight versions of that same link. Canonical link means, hey Google, this is the one link that matters, right? I think what you're talking about too, it relies more on the community to actually submit link to Google to get reviewed and say, hey, they're copying my data or they're lying. Right. You actually select my drop down, what's wrong with it, and you submit the site. And mm -hmm. that's how they'll figure out the canonical issues. I'm thinking of publishing networks like Mac World, PC World, Computer World, Info World, they all run the same source. Yep. But so and then those con chronicles would work there. Um, Webmaster tools will have it set up so that Google knows this is all part of the same site. Okay. And I, I will get that. I just want to stay on the same vein real quick. Another reason why you should use these social media sites first is because every website ever, Google gives like a point system to. Like Facebook, Tumblr, YouTube, LinkedIn, all these sites are at the highest of the point system. And basically, if a site links to you, it sends you points. It's like, that's my boy, you know what I mean? And so if you use these sites, like if you go Google me, I have the easiest time just taking over the front page because I got a Twitter, I got a LinkedIn, I got a Facebook, and Google recognizes all those as very high authority sites. So like you were saying, if food bloggers link to you, well, you could have like 100 food bloggers linking to you, but if they weren't high authority, and then some other guy has two, like like Rachel Ray and Emerald Lagasse, maybe they don't even cook anymore, but if they link to that person, Google's going to respect that person more, you know, so it's all, I mean, now we're getting into SEO, which is fine, because I, I like, you know, like SEO, but, you know, that's why you're going to take these social sites seriously. These are the first places Google looks when they say, should I take this person seriously? They say, well, they have Facebook, they have LinkedIn, they have Twitter, they have a Tumblr, they have these important sites that if you had a legitimate business or personal brand that you would obviously go take, I should have made a list of that kind of stuff, um, but, yeah, just... Go out and Google Google a couple of famous people and see what the top five sites are that show up. And, and it'll probably be the top five sites you want to try and get your name on as well as your web page. John, how are we doing for time? We're good. We're good? Yeah. Do we have more questions? Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped you. We'll get over there. Yeah, okay. So I was wondering about a strategy for what links Facebook would point back in for. And the examples, I work for the office for the arts at MIT, and on our top page, it changes like there's spotlights that change according to events. So number one is, does that hurt us because the content is a constant on the whole page? And the second question is, if there's 20 events in a year, we like on Facebook will we'll say, come to this event, and then it's over. Then Facebook will say, come to that event. Should I also try to lead people to the home page? Like does it hurt us that we're pointing to different events on the same site? Oh, I don't think the... Let me answer your second one there first one. I think yeah. that's fine. I think that's good. I think that that's natural link behavior online, and um, it, it makes sense. Google's going to say, oh, they have Facebook events and links to their main page. That, that's normal. And then your first question, could you repeat your first question? Oh, yeah. Question? If, there, if you have a slideshow, we have a slideshow on the top page that changes <laughs> content. Mm -hmm. Are we weakening the importance of that page because Google will say there isn't constant content there? I don't believe so because that's in its own little special coded box. And that's not what Google's actually looking at. Google's not actually seeing broken content. Not content. They're They're seeing all the content at once. Oh. oh okay. so that's why we bring him. That's cool. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> it's going crazy. Thank you. Um, you and then you. Um, I, I, I'm not sure I got the answer to that question. Right. If you have, if your main page, your index page, is a static page, yeah. does that work against you? In no. no. I don't believe it does. Right. My question was about migrating, I, and, and it gets easier to ask the question just from my own experience. I had a blogspot page linked to a web page that was not made for WordPress before I came to WordPress. Welcome. 
right here. <laughs> and now I have this, so now I have this, this blog, this older blog thing, well, that comes up on, on searches and does okay. Um, it, that's in Blogspot that has not linked to my website. I mean, it's linked, but it's not. It doesn't redirect. Involved. It doesn't, right. It's not directly involved. Yeah. So, um, do, should I migrate that blog to a WordPress blog? Is it, does it matter? Is it take it just a little? But by migrate, what do you mean? Do you mean take it down, take all the content, and move take it over? Take content and move it over. Yes. And make it. It depends on what your goals are. I mean. I think that it probably, in some ways, helps you that you have a site that already has the audience been around for a while that links to your site. Um, I, I'm by no means an expert, so I can't tell you necessarily, but that's what I would I would think. It's completely circumstantial. Yeah. If you think that by moving to WordPress, you'll have uh, even you know, better. <laughs> but you can just like better brand your site in order to doesn't look like it's just a one-off blogger site. Um, cool. If you want more control, then it can help. But it's, it's, not, it's not really hurting you much if you have a blog spot. It's the content still there. It's by Google. Yeah, right, right, right. Well, are you saying that now you have a WordPress site? I do. And you still have this old site that still pops up in the search results for the same terms, too? Mm -hmm. And you're wondering if you should get rid of this site, too? Mm -hmm. um, if I should keep it going, or if I should kind of start a new one, my day Content with that duplicate content. If you can import duplicating, it might not be a bad thing. Keep it in one place. The only thing with that is you have to make sure because Blogger writes the URLs a little differently in WordPress. So it's, it's re, I think it's usually just a .html command. Sometimes they have to use Jetpack to do it or something. They have, they have import from Blogger. It's, it's not too bad. It pulls in most information. It doesn't pull in all of it. Um, I, I used it three years ago in class, so I'm not sure what it does now. I would suggest the WordPress genius, as you call it yourselves. What do you, call, what do you guys call yourselves? It's the happiness bar. Happiness bar, happiness bar. I would suggest going out there, maybe, and talking to someone and seeing what, what they think about your exact situation. Because all of these things are, like you said, contextual. You know? does, that, does that answer your question? I don't want you to have your question. No, 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 it's okay. Yeah. Okay. I have quite a it, yeah, it really depends on what your goals are, and if you're if you're still getting value out of having that site up, I don't necessarily see any reason to take it down. But if you think it's distracting people, I think that's the question: Is it distracting people from where you want them to go? You know. And if you move, you have to do it right. You have to make sure all the individual posts map up and they're all redirected. So it's a little technical. Yeah. Some small challenges there. You need to make sure you do it right, though. Yeah. There are people here who know how to help you do it right. <laughs> You, okay, oh, you and then you, right? Okay, cool. And then we're going to wrap it up because we, the other one ended about 15 more minutes ago. People are already networking and leaving and stuff. So we want to get the opportunity to do that as well. Is there a, a user forum or a directory where I can go and see which live webinar sites and slideshows are uh, optimized for WordPress? I think, like, are you asking where you can get slideshows that are up much WordPress? Is that my understanding of question correctly? I'm looking to go see what other people recommend as the best. Or slideshows specifically. Slideshows in my book. I am a big fan of, um, is it, is it SlideShare? Are you putting a slideshow on your site? Yes. As for webinars, I've never put them on myself, so I can't give you any resources. Anybody here put on webinars? It might be able to help us that now. Isn't there WordPress TV? WordPress TV. Yeah, you can bring it sometimes. Yeah. You can automatically record it and post it to YouTube automatically. You can post it on YouTube yourself. I use Google Hangout, but I've never put in a, a webinar like that. I would. I, I've never personally marketed for a webinar and tried to pull in other people. I've only taught people I know, and so Google Hangouts really low key. It records, pushes right to YouTube, like you said. You should. You should at least give that a shot. If it's under 10, 20 people, can you embed it in a WordPress site? Or I guess you I can. The popular video sites. Uh, WordPress has this thing. Turn it on, I think, but it's called Oh Embed. So on, all you do with that is Oh Embed. Literally with that, if I want to put a YouTube video and embed it in my page, I just paste the link. And WordPress goes and actually turns it into the embed code. You do that with Fiddler, Vimeo, SlideShare, a whole bunch of services. Really easy. Okay. Really Excuse easy. me. Oh Embed. Oh Embed. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. If you Google that, and the WordPress should pop up with all the different things you can use it for. Last question. I'm just curious um, of the like WordPress sites that you read, and you know sites, blogs, whatever. What are some that you think are, have been really innovative 
with their social media and WordPress integration? I'm always looking for cool examples, so I didn't know if you had any. It's a really good question. Um, for innovation, John. We're working with a client right now called Sandazon out in California. Their entire site's on WordPress using WooCommerce for their store. And uh, they just have a really cool social media strategy that tied pretty well. Lindsay helped put it together, actually. Um, cool. So they, they're pretty cool. Uh, I'm trying to think outside of stuff I've worked around. The guy from BU was here, right? He's, he's presented twice, right? Their yes, entire works, site is... Works for automatic now. BU in general, though, uh, does a great job with their WordPress sites. It's a, it's a single network that any uh, professor or any department can go to them and say, hey, we need a one-off WordPress site. They have a standard theme that they use. And then uh, everything from BU today to us other big sites are all done on WordPress. And it's all integrated nicely with social media and stuff. Um, they have, like, forms and communities on there. That's kind of that's probably one of the cooler at a larger scale that I've seen. Um, cool. I'm gonna um, host these slides on the slide share, and I'm gonna add a couple more resources and fix Bitly, so it's right, you can put it on the internet, and um, I'll put it in the WordPress group for anybody who needs. And if you have any questions, my name is Zach Champney. You can hopefully get you back to the number one slide if you want to see my name and stuff. If you need to contact me, if you have any questions, if you need any help, um, I might be able to help you, or I know a bunch of people who might be able to help you. So, And if you have any questions about the Startup Institute, come talk to me. I got some stickers out there. It's really cool. And if you have anybody looking for you know, a job or to learn some new skills, I might be able to help them out. So thank you guys for your attention. I really appreciate it. I appreciate people want to learn. So thank you.